You know, sometimes it's just easier when it's smaller. Welcome back to the Skill Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's episode 35 of What's on the Bench Weekly. And if you're not familiar with What's on the Bench, it's where I take you through a bunch of projects that are on the bench, things I'm working on, things I may have completed. Maybe I'll even teach you something. Today's one of those days where I'm going to teach you something. First, we're gonna start with uh, this really awesome little guy. Uh, this is a FJ style cruiser body from the Hard Body Crawler Company. I'll put links down below to all of the things you're about to see, uh, but rest assured, this is a pretty awesome little hard body for your SCX24 or Galande 2. <laughs> it's 18 scale if you happen to have one of those. Probably don't. <laughs> All jokes aside, this is a really great hard body kit to convert an existing SCX24 or Galande 2 18 scale. And you get everything you need to make something look just like this. However, there are a few techniques here that I will share at the end uh, that will really kind of set one of these off. They come in a glossy molded plastic. You can get this, uh, this nice tan color here on the box or this navy blue. I've got both here and I'm gonna unbox the box for you so you can see what you would get if you were to get one of these. There are lots of really cool accessories that you can add to make this even more scale accurate, uh, but I will say they do a really good job of uh, providing some QR codes for all of the instruction videos, not just a manual, though they do include one of those as well. Uh, all the parts are very nicely packaged uh, and uh, packaged individually, I might add. So there's the roof there for one of them. Uh, as you can see, you won't need to do any painting. You can just pull this out of the box, all the parts, pull this out of the box, pull it out of the bag and assemble it. The really cool thing is there's no glue required. Uh, they made this sort of a snap together kit uh, and there are a ton of tiny little baby screws that you will need to use to uh, put it all together uh, you know properly but there is no glue required everything is either snap fit or uh, screwed together which is really great and, and they've spared no expense all of the details are included rear view mirrors marker lights magnetized hood full interior it's not a full depth interior mind you but if you wanted to add the top of a action figure. Apparently the miniature 3.75 inch tall Star Wars characters fit quite well once you remove their legs. All in all, it's a really nice kit and super easy to assemble. I had no trouble whatsoever. I'm pretty sure a beginner could easily put this together and end up with a pretty unique miniature scale RC. I, I really like this and I think it's really cool to see. They've got a ton of really awesome accessories including these kind of cruiser-like wheels. These are one-inch beadlock wheels. Uh, you can run them with the covers shown there. I'll pull one out here so you can get a better look. Uh, you can uh, either run them with this cover uh, that looks very nice, or you can run them without and actually show off miniature little tiny bolts. Comes with a tool to install those uh, covers. So let's just remove one. What good attention to detail. Looks very good. Um, in addition to the wheels, they also have a number of other accessories, which I've already installed on my finished truck. So we'll Martha Stewart this box over here and show you the finished truck. And here it is here. Uh, I will zoom in a little bit so we get a better look at it. There we go. And uh, what you're looking at is a finished painted version of the Heart Body Crawler Company crawler. I decided to go with a nebula green or something close to it, which is an actual FJ color for this era of Land Cruiser. Um, I thought it really matched nicely and uh, was a good complement to the aged kind of look that I wanted to go for. And I'll explain that paint in a little bit. But some of the additional accessories you can get include this metal front bumper, metal license plate holder, and 
metal rear bumper with tail lights and metal rear license plate holder. All of those things are additional accessories that you can get uh, that I really think help set this truck off. It looks fantastic. Full interior details, you've got all the shifters, you've got a full dashboard, steering wheel, seats, even the rear seats as well. Uh, they opted to go with the split door version at the back, which I think is a pretty interesting and cool choice. I think they did a really nice job on that. And I think what really helps set these little guys off is when you do some customizing. And that's what I've done here with this paint job. As you can see, I've gone ahead and done some rusting and chipping. And chipping is a really interesting technique. And I've done it a few times on a few other vehicles that I've finished, including uh, the jelly bean truck, which I'll probably put a picture of here or I'll link to it. Maybe you can check out a whole video series on that. So in order to achieve this effect, you'll need a few things. A rust colored primer like I've used here uh, and chipping medium, which is right here. I use the Vallejo chipping medium. If you don't have this or don't want to order it or cannot order it for some reason, raid your girlfriend or wife's closet for a little hairspray because this will work exactly the same way. Say, so you've primed your vehicle, then spray down a nice decent coat of the chipping medium or hairspray, either or, uh, and let that dry. Once that's dried, airbrush on or spray paint on. I would recommend a water-based paint for this. It just works better than a lacquer. You can use a lacquer, but it's not as effective as a water-based paint. So uh, airbrush your next water-based paint as your final color, whatever that's gonna be. I chose this green, which happened to be this one here, I believe. Verde Huevo Pato from Vallejo, or Eau de Nil, DE Green. <laughs> Worked perfectly. Looks exactly like Nebula, which I'm pretty happy about. Uh, once you've sprayed that color down, get yourself a wet paintbrush and scrape away at the top layer of paint to reveal the rust layer underneath. It's really that simple. There's not much to it. Uh, not much pressure needs to be applied either. Uh, simply wet your brush and just kind of poke at it a little bit and little bits of the top paint will come away and think about where you want to do it <laughs> i'll leave that one for you all uh, but think about where you want this effect to really come through it's going to be in the high wear areas so any there's any place there's a uh, like a door jam or something, you're gonna get more of that effect there. Uh, there are some specific areas of rust that are, are pretty common on Land Cruisers, so I did that as well. Uh, anywhere panel gaps meet, uh, anywhere there's gonna be uh, feet rubbing up against an area, that's a good spot to do it as well. Uh, but don't overdo it. And again, this is one of those things that you learn with practice. If it feels like it's just about enough, that's where you should stop. <laughs> that's the best way I can describe it. I almost went a little overboard in some of the corners of these panels here at the front, uh, but I wisely stopped just before I, th I thought it got to be too much. And I think it turned out pretty good. It's a subtle effect, but that's the point of weathering. Weathering shouldn't hit you over the head. You don't need to paint the whole truck in rust to get a rusty looking truck. This is all you need to give a truck some age. And I think it really sets this model off and makes it unique. And that should always be the goal. Don't just do what everybody else does. Do something unique to make it your own. I cannot stress that enough. It always looks better when it's had some work done to it. Overall, great looking little kit. Definitely something I would recommend if you're looking to do something a bit different with your next SCX24 or one of the ones you have on the shelf. This actually was the Bronco before I got started. And the Hard Body Crawler Company did an incredible job of making it fit and work very well. Of course, now it's more of a trail truck than it ever was. Uh, but I'm really happy with the look. I think that looks pretty fantastic. There are some other more advanced techniques that I could use, uh, the oil dot method to really weather it up, but I just kind of felt like this was a good place to stop on this one. I think it looks pretty good just as is. Uh, let me know what you're thinking. Do you, is this a technique that you think you could try? I mean, there's no reason you can't, unless you don't have hairspray, but that's pretty easy to get. Put a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking. You know I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of them as I can. And if you enjoy this video, you like what's on the bench weekly, 
hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. Okay, on to the next thing. Man, I almost forgot to mention, I can't believe I forgot about this, but since I've got this second Navy body kit, uh, we'll give this one away. Uh, so just comment down below, let me know what color you would paint your hard body crawler company Land Cruiser. And that's it. Anybody in the world, I'll ship it free of charge. Speaking of, if you get a reply that looks shady and they all do because they don't have my name it says text me on telegram or whatnot that's a scam i will never ask you to pay for shipping won't ask you for any money whatsoever so if you want one of these be sure to be wary of scammers because they are out there and they are scum also on the bench today, the new Axial SCX-10 Pro, and this is not necessarily a scaled truck. Let's get that out of the way right now. It's a comp-based Class 2 or Class 3 truck, and I built this live uh, on Sunday. Very enjoyable build, great build quality, great attention to detail. You can really tell that Axial is not pulling punches on this one, and they're going for a new market. One that they actually sort of started with a long time ago. Uh, but this is the latest iteration of what I would consider to be a fairly comp-ready chassis. Uh, and they've really done a nice job on this one. Aluminum flat rails, uh, which is not scale at all. Forward mounted motor uh, transmission and a really interesting uh, shiftable or selectable underdrive. This is not an overdrive truck in that the front wheels will spin faster with overdrive. It's an underdrive in that the rear wheels will spin less than the front wheels. I actually, I quite like this truck and I think it's going to be a great platform for my next scale comp crawler. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going class two. I'm going to be putting together my own body. Uh, for now, I've got this really nice uh, cage here on the back that was Josh designed. He joshed this one. Um, it's a nice flat panel, so I guess you would get like uh, flatbed points perhaps. And then there's a bit of a cage on the back too, which is pretty neat. Uh, but moreover, this is a very interesting design and I think Axial really did a nice job. I'm pretty happy with it. I don't have a lot of complaints. Uh, the new shocks are fantastic and let's check to see if they're leak free still. Yes, 100% leak free, which is shocking. <laughs> um, new axle design, a substantial bit wider than an SCX-10-3 axle. Uh, they've got metal tubes uh, and then plastic housings for the pumpkin. Uh, really well thought out design. It does have a three degree uh, uh, angled skid, so you cannot use this in class one. Uh, that said, there are some already aftermarket options to make it class one legal. Uh, Brazen Scale, for example, is making one, and they're doing it in a number of different materials too. You can get G10, carbon fiber, or aluminum, I believe. So they're already doing a bunch of upgrades, which is really cool to see. Um, I do think though that this is going to be a fairly competitive out of the box platform for those of you who are looking to get started in true comp crawling. I say that, you know, because there are a lot of trucks on the market and a lot of people have been trying to compare this to others that are already available. People are asking me a lot, should I buy this or a Phoenix if I want to compete? I would lean towards this. I think this is going to be a much more competitive out of the box truck. It's not to say that a Phoenix can't be competitive. I just think that this one has already got a lot of the things that you would change in order to make it more competitive. There's a lot more to do on this uh, to make it competitive for me. Uh, and uh, we'll be getting into that in the other series, Road to the Regionals or Road to the Rockies. Road to the Rockies, that's the one. So there you go. Uh, I've installed for electronics so far, uh, Reef's 1100 Smart for steering, which is tons, <laughs> probably more than I need. And I'm also using their 800 IS internal spool winch. Uh, and the other great thing is Axial planned for this sort of winch to be used, either an internal or an external spool, either or. They'll make it, uh, they, they will make both fit. It's fantastic. They really did a nice job on that layout. 
pretty pleased with that. Also for uh, driving, uh, we've got currently in there a 1950 KV in-runner motor from Furitech. Uh, I'll also be using their Furitech Lizard Pro 10 for now anyway, to see how this stacks up against some of the more common uh, competitors on the market. Let's see how that goes though. I'm pretty excited about that. And there you go. First look at this. I have yet to drive it because I just finished it on Sunday. It's Tuesday today and there is like 10 inches of snow on the ground. Speaking of, with all that snow, I really should get the Ski Ride 2 out, but work has kind of been the more important thing lately. It pays the bills, guys. <laughs> Let's be fair. Uh, but we'll get that Ski Ride 2 out and um, do a little running video ASAP. Really looking forward to that. It should be a fun one. Uh, and I think that's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again next week.